Welcome to our Fed Talks executive video series. I'm Wyatt Cash with Scoop News Group, and we're here today with Scott Barr, a Maximus Technology and Consulting Lead. Uh, Scott, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Uh, my first question for you is, where have you seen cloud services making the biggest impact in helping federal agencies make faster or more valuable use of their data recently? Why, that's a great question. I tend to think about it in sort of two main areas. One is, as agencies have evolved their development model to more of an agile DevSecOps model, we now are accelerating program increments, right? Incremental value to the clients and bringing more involvement from the end user. So that transition to the, the DevOps model combined with what where none of us are uh, surprised by is likely to remain a very hybrid or geographic workforce model. Bought about by what's happened over the past couple of years, agencies and consulting firms that bring technical talent to the government have begun to open up their geographic search for talent, right? We know that there is a shortage of technical talent. And as we're trying to bring the best, whether you're a, a company serving the government or the government itself, we now have opened up our aperture to think, hey, because of the cloud, these folks now can reside anywhere. And so we have teams of scrum teams that are operating in some cases, not physically near each other at all. And as a user, you know, when your data is in the cloud, the agency can put something like a data bricks on the front end, think of it as a way to identify your personal credentials. And because it's in the cloud, you can then right away begin to query and use that data you have access to. And so the net result of all of this is the cost of developing business applications is beginning to go down. No longer do we necessarily need teams of on-site developers and data warehouse experts. You know, many of these low-code, no-code cloud-based platforms allow us to build in the cloud and things that used to maybe take a team of 40 or 50 people can now be a dozen or so. And it's not just the IT departments that are benefiting from this. So if you think of these efficiencies that our IT departments are having in building these applications, these business applications, we're now at a point where the agency leadership is saying, hey, I can continue to drive innovation at pace with my IT and modernization, but I can re-vector some of those assets on the front line to the mission. And so you're seeing you know, the net result is that an increase, because you're moving to the cloud, an increase in adoption and development of program increments and value to the client but also more of your analysts on the front end being able to do what they need to be able to do. And that I think is the main value to the government. A great example. Uh, next, I'd like to ask, where do you see the greatest opportunities now for things like AL, uh, sorry, AI and ML, and uh, also for automation to improve citizen services in the federal government? Yep, that's a great question. So. When I think about citizens engaging with the government, it is often at multiple entry points, right? And the government is maybe capturing some information online, some you're going into somewhere and filling out information. And imagine, you know, people are spelling things differently. They've got initials versus middle name. You know, people like a James can be a Jim or a Jimmy. And so you have all of this, what is really cross check of information from multiple sources to really to try and create the single identity of, of who is this individual. And now with AI, we can apply AI smartly to do that cross-check, to look at multiple variations, multiple permeations and cross-check and create a single identity of that user. And again, where we wanna go with this is it's a shift from manual labor. We wanna remove the ambiguity in the process. We wanna streamline that adjudication process of how our citizens are engaging with us. And AI can handle a crazy amount of data that is this validation. And if you apply that to get more volume, more accuracy on those cases that are deemed standard, then you can really apply the human intellect, the human talent, the investigative nature 
of your analyst on those complex cases. So from the citizen's experience, for the vast majority of cases, you are getting quicker, better, you know, higher volume through, better streamlined use of the data, but from the agency's perspective, you're now in a position where without reducing that volume or that service to the citizen, you can apply that investigative resources where you need it. And net net, I think it is that cross check. It is the smart use of AI that allows us to really use the talent of individuals to do that difficult adjudication where it needs a layer of human intelligence and innovation. And I think that's the value we're starting to see of smart application of AI to improve citizen services. Well, Scott Barr, thank you for stopping by and uh, sharing uh, both of those observations and your insights uh, on ways that the federal government is using technology to improve citizen services. So thank you for being with us. Thank you.